Good evening. Good evening, my friends. Today, today is my 40th birthday. Can you believe that? Yeah. So, that's, I'm 40. But, uh, it's alright. I'm ready. I'm ready to finally enter into, uh, the calling that God has called me to. We will see. But today I want to share just what was in my heart. You know, yesterday when I saw uh, that Ukraine had been attacked by Russia, I just remembered this word from Jesus. And I just want to share Matthew 24, verses, starting in verse 4, it says, And Jesus answered unto them and said, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. These are all the beginning of sorrows. And then you shall be delivered up to be afflicted, and they shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And I'm just going to start from the top here. Because the disciples are asking Jesus, what are the signs of the times? Like, when, when's the end going to come? And Jesus says this. He's like, don't let anyone deceive you. Um, and first he talks about the, de the deception that's going to come on the world. And it's and it's not really... Um, the, the deception isn't as much of a convincing that God doesn't exist, right? There, He's saying, for many shall come in my name. Now, they're coming in the name of Jesus, saying, I am Christ. So you have to understand what he's saying here. I used to think that it was saying people were coming and professing themselves to be the Christ. But I believe he's saying, many shall come in my name, in the name of Jesus, saying that Jesus is the Christ and shall deceive many. You know what I mean? So this is a greater deception. The deception is so great because they're coming in the name of Jesus, professing that Jesus is Lord, and deceiving many you know what i mean that's that's the that's that's the deception that this is talking about uh wolves in sheep's clothing uh appearing as angels of light and apostles um just like false apostles when when paul speaks about false apostles they were coming as apostles okay so we need to understand that the great deception isn't going to be convincing people that God doesn't exist because of uh, dinosaurs and everything else, like the madness that I see with the dinosaurs, and now they're putting feathers on dinosaurs to make it more realistic that they evolved and stuff. That, that is, that's deception as well, but that's not the deception that this is talking about. The great deception is people coming in the name of Jesus Christ and deceiving many, which is what we see happening all around the world today. And it says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. I mean, we're, we're hearing of rumors of wars constantly, and now we're starting to hear of wars. And, and there will be more wars and more rumors of wars. Um, we'll see what happens, right? But do not be troubled. These things have to come to pass. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet, right? And nation for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's the beginning, you know, not the end. But we are seeing that coming to pass. But here's what's, what's you know, not scary. It shouldn't be scary. But when I thought about this, I was like, it's interesting when I see, and I'm starting to take notice to the signs of the times. And then it says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated 
of all nations for my name's sake. This is, uh, this is what we should be prepared for. You know what I mean? And it probably seems so far off, and maybe it won't be in our lifetime. I don't know. But the thing we need to be in our mind, like, ready to do is lay down our life for the gospel. I mean, why are we still holding on our lives? It's interesting. All this stuff is happening. And, and you know, these wars. And, and, and I flip houses. Um, and, and, I, and I just hired a patent lawyer for uh, a patent idea that the Lord gave me. And I immediately started thinking about um, all this money that's tied up in these things. You know, that God's blessed me with this money. To, to do these things with and and it's like who cares about all that stuff what do I care if if I never see any of that stuff come to completion who cares if I if I don't finish these houses or I go bankrupt or or whatever you know what I mean like that does not matter what matters is that I'm preaching the gospel you know so I'm I'm trying to really get my mind uh, back to um you know, hitting the streets again and, and, and just getting out there. I've been playing more of the pastoral role at, at First Love Church and my heart's really been for evangelism and I haven't been on the streets like I used to be. And, and I'm trying to discern all these things and, and, and the Lord is, is leading me and, and I'm finding my place in the body. Um, and it's, it's, it's tough, but the, the more I see what's going on in the world, uh, the more the fire is burning in me to realize, like, okay, I got to get my ducks in a row here and uh, just get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get on the streets and, and make sure people understand the gravity of the things that are coming upon us. Whether it's whether it's tomorrow or a hundred years from now, it doesn't matter. Like, the, the disciples were always preaching as if it was right then you know what i mean so you know we're in the last hour we're in the last minutes we're in the last seconds so so let's live like it and let's be ready but let's not let it trouble us let's not let's not be troubled let's know that these things have to come to pass we want the end to come even though we don't want it to come in our days because those days are darkness and not light. We should, we should long for for the mystery to be revealed, for us to be able to see God. And we should, we should know that whatever in this life that we think that we need to hold on to, it's nothing. We gotta let that go and 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 really walk in the fullness of the Spirit and really deny ourselves. It's like there's something of myself that's so deeply rooted in me. I'm just like really trying to to let go of everything and really live for the gospel and uh, and live like these are the times that we're living in. <laughs> and we should all be doing that. Amen.